He'd pay twenty thousand dollars for his picture. Oh. Now I'm beginning to understand. It was that sneak Bosley. Bosley? He bought those pictures from you for twenty thousand dollars so that he could sell them to my father. Are you saying that Miss Bosley was posing as your father? You got the picture, pal. You've been had. I'm sure you heard everything. Everything? Well, get on it. Find a phony, Mr. Walker. And then? After we have recovered the pictures, I will decide whether to kill him or just bruise him severely. as soon as I could. Okay? The man inside that house is the fake Stuart Walker. Whew. Fast work. How did you trace him? I remembered the license number of the limousine yesterday. I traced the limo to the Charlie Towns and Carriage Service of Beverly Hills. They said they'd rented it to a Mr. Bosley. Then I made another check and found out that this Bosley is a former Walker family servant. Ah, uh, uh, all pieces together. Former as of two weeks ago. He bought the pictures from you for 20000 so he could sell them to Walker. Now, if they're that valuable to Bosley, imagine what they're worth to Walker. Clever man, this Bosley. An opportunist. That's Bosley. There he is. Let's go. A word with you, sir. I made my position very clear yesterday. And I paid you $20,000. Now, part of that was for the privilege of never laying eyes on you again. That was yesterday when your name was Walker. Today is today, Mr. Bosley. And tomorrow is tomorrow is tomorrow. If we're going to stand around quoting Shakespeare, it's going to be a very tedious day. Okay, you posed as Walker to get the pictures, expecting to sell them at a higher price to Walker. Oh, you've got something against capitalism? You will return them to us. We'll return the $20,000 to you. And I will have the unparalleled thrill of breaking even. Forget it. Don't make me use this. Put that damn thing away, or there's no talk at all. You being heavy-handed, Kelly? Okay. We'll give you 20,000 plus five. That way you walk away with a profit. That way I walk away with chump change. I'm gonna make you one more offer, Bosley, and you're gonna take it. $30,000. Your offers are as tedious as my Shakespeare. 40,000, my final offer. And you have just five seconds. Kelly wasn't going to shoot you. You were right in your judgment. I will. It's amazing, isn't it, how time flies when you're having fun? The five seconds have slipped away. All right, you've got a deal. But that is not necessary. I'll be the judge of that. Tell uh, Mr. Cruz, this is Schaefer Goodhue, and I'm back in town. You in there? Why don't you put him on there? Hey, Borden A. Kelly. Kelly who? My what? I don't have an assistant. <laughs> Hello, Tony. What on earth are you doing? Shut up, Cruz. You're going to listen for a change. I just want to introduce Kelly to someone she's never met. Schaefer? K. 
Kelly, meet Mr. Goodhue. You didn't know you had an assistant, did you, Schaefer? Is this true? They can explain everything. I adore good fiction, Kelly. But make this one short. I make it good. Look, the only thing I'm guilty of is lying about being his assistant. Other than that, I've been dealing in good faith. I helped you with the Walker girl. I even upped the ante for you. Maybe. What's your angle? I'm interested in the possibility of getting some really big money out of Stuart Walker. After that, it's your option. I can walk away or you can keep me on. I'm afraid I'm having trouble with your credibility at this point. Suit yourself. You can always sell the pictures back to that Bosley fellow. Tony, I want to keep that appointment with Mr. Walker. What if it's a setup? Mr. Good, you will have to put you in common your car for a while, Kelly. Sorry about the discomfort. And if this is just petty suspicion on my part, I'll make it up to you. If, on the other hand, you set us up, I'll make that up to you. Could you take the lady to the bowling alley? Come on. Looks like Kelly was able to ditch the gold dust twins without any problem. Not a bad operation. Her client gets her $10,000 back plus interest and a nice retainer for the office. And no dented fenders, huh, boss? Interesting pictures, wouldn't you say, Mr. Walker? It seems to me that the craftsmanship in these photographs leaves a great deal to be desired. Under the circumstances, aren't you being a bit cavalier? Not at all. You are Stuart Walker. Yes, but that girl is not my daughter. Not your daughter. Which is a good thing for you. If that was my daughter, I wouldn't pay to get the pictures. I'd invest my money into removing you from the face of the earth. It would be cheaper and more rewarding. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Sabrina, we may have a huge problem. It went like clockwork. What's the matter? Well, I'm back here at the office and Kelly hasn't shown. Not only that, there was a message on the service for Boz and that detective's back in town, Schaefer Goodhue. Schaefer's back in town and Kelly's suddenly gone. Oh, boy, I'm afraid that adds up. <sighs> right, Kelly's in trouble. Terrific. So where do we go to help? The dance studio? No, no, that's too obvious and too public. Okay, then where? Um, uh, Cruz's hideaway, uh, the bowling alley, it's on 8th and Grand. Jill, bowling alley, 8th and Grand. Okay, I'll meet you there. When Bourdonnais and Cruz get back here, everything will be cleared up. So why don't you relax and put away the gun? I am relaxed. You're the one who's not relaxed. And I like it that way. Hey, sit down. Cool it, good Hugh. I I'm not going anywhere. Sit, sit down. Charlie Townsend, am I glad to see you?
Tony? Tony? Dance card, Phil? Let me have your gun fingertips, please. Back inside. Join your friend on the floor, Alexander. Go ahead. I won't dance. Don't ask me. <laughs> Bosley, angels. Is there something wrong with our connection, Bosley, or do I detect wheezing? Oh, no, no, no. That's just the usual morning rattle. I'm returning your photos to you, Sabrina. Thought you might want to start a scrapbook. The negatives, too, Charlie. I got my reputation to protect. <laughs> right you are, Sabrina. Charlie, why don't we send a set to Cruz, Bordenay, and Goodhue? Give them something to think about while they're doing time. Oh, very funny. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt your well-deserved celebration, but I did want you to know that Laura Kluzak is very grateful for getting her money back. Our pleasure, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Yes, Jill? It would be a shame for all that research to go to waste. Don't you agree? Meaning? Well, I was just thinking. Do you hustle? What? Oh, never mind. <laughs> just a thought, you know? Oh. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were three little girls who went to the police academy. <laughs> and they were each assigned very hazardous duties. But I took them away from all that, and now they work for me. My name is Charlie.
Huh? I saw every film she ever made. She's just incredible. Yeah, I saw one of her pictures on TV last week. Uh, a western. Right, the Sodbusters. Hey. I remember seeing that, too. She played a rancher's wife. She survived cholera, a gunshot wound, a cattle stampede. <laughs> She's a very heavy lady. A very nice lady. Wait a minute, Charlie. Now, I remember one scene from that picture where she looked out the window and she saw her husband hanging from a tree. The hanging man in Gloria's garden. Like the scene from the picture. Charlie, you don't suppose she's flashing back on her old films, do you? Yes, that's a possibility. It's also possible someone wants us to reach that conclusion. You mean someone's doing a gaslight number on her? Exactly. And she'd be an easy victim. She's been under a lot of strain the past year since her husband died. Nikki Lowen, the gambler. She nursed him through a long illness. And then when she had recovered from her grief enough to go back to work, everyone had forgotten her. Maybe not quite everyone. If she isn't crazy, it looks like someone's trying to drive her there. Charlie said you'd be expecting us. Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, Miss Gibson? I'm Sabrina Duncan. This is Joe Monroe. How are you? Kelly Garrett. Hi. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry I, I can't offer you all a place to sit, but I'm planning to redecorate. You know, I imagine it would really look marvelous in something like Louis XV. That's exactly what I have planned. How perceptive of you. Well, 
Thank you. It really is a lovely house. Well, Nikki built it for me when we were in Italy on our honeymoon. It's quite a wedding present. Nikki was quite a man. He had a special room where I best remember him. May I show it to you? Okay. <laughs> A Botticelli fresco? One of Nikki's finest reproductions. We were on our wedding trip in Italy when we saw the original. Nikki fell in love with it. So he brought over from the studio a fine art director to do the work. Art director? They are responsible for the decor and architecture of the set, sculpture and paintings. The best ones are fine artists themselves. Well, whoever did that work surely was. It's really marvelous. Nikki just loved to sit in this chair and study it. I joined him sometimes, and we stay here for hours. I can understand why. Uh, forgive me. Surely. <coughs> this is Gloria Gibson. Gloria. Oh, Frank. I'm at Mammoth Studios. I finally got that appointment for you with Jardine. Two o'clock Wednesday. Such short notice. Look, I'm willing to tell them at your convenience. That might shake them up a little bit. No, I... I don't want to risk that. Will they send a limousine? No. Yes. Goodbye. That, that was my agent, Frank Ross. My old studio is making an updated version of the heart of New York. That was one of my most successful pictures. I remember it. Of course. This time, I'm up for the mother's role. It's much smaller. But I'll make something of it. I remember the role of the mother. That's a good part. You'll be terrific in it, Miss Gibson. Oh, call me Gloria. Thank you. All of you call me Gloria. Okay. Thank you. Um, Gloria, do you think you could show us where you saw the hanging man? That isn't what I saw. Could have looked like a man in the dark. I saw a man hanging. Uh, Miss Gibson, Gloria, you remember a film you did called The Sodbuster? I know what you're thinking. There was a man hanging from a tree in a scene from The Sodbusters. There were two other stories I told Charlie about a snarling dog child's severed hand. They were in scenes from my movies. But I did see them. I am not unbalanced. No one thinks you're unbalanced. Somebody's trying to drive me crazy. Or kill me. Why would anyone want to do that? You don't know Hollywood. You don't climb to the top. You claw your way there. And there are those you hurt who never forget and never forgive. No doubt, they're quite pleased to hear that I am broke. And 
very close to losing this house. When Nicky died, he left you in debt? It was my furniture, my paintings. They went. And everything of value that I owned. I lied about the redecorating. But you knew about that. I'm sure. Well, personally, I like a house that's decorated with understatement. <laughs> Charlie suggested that I stay here with you. Can you cook? Uh, can you? We can always send out. Oh, we may have to. What do you think? Are we talking to a lovely old lady with head problems, or is someone really doing numbers on her? And if they are, why? She hasn't got any money, which leaves us with revenge. You know, what we've got here is a lack of information about our client. I mean, Bosley gave us a whole dossier full of facts. We need to take a more personal approach. Right. Like people who've worked with her. Or will work with her. Exactly. Gloria Gibson, past and present. Okay. I'll go over to the studio and see what the rank and file think about Gloria making a comeback. Now, somehow you could work on the picture. You just triggered one of my favorite fantasies. I'll see who's casting the bits and extras. It's all a star is born. <laughs>
Pretty Pretty is in the next building. Pretty Pretty? Casting. You're looking for casting, right? Wrong. You're hungry. Never eat before lunch. Oh, wise move. You been here long? Oh, about ten minutes. No, I mean at the studio. Two hours. <laughs> I mean, how long have you been working at the studio? I come up with the right answer. Do I get a prize? Definitely. Forty years. Been here 40 years. Oh, gee. You must have been here when Gloria Gibson was making pictures. Gloria? Sure. Did you know her? Intimately. Intimately? Every day at noon. Oh. <laughs> gee. I never would have thought. Liverwurst with horseradish. Every day, liverwurst with horseradish. I'm not following you. That's all she ever ate. Liverwurst with horseradish sandwiches. I had to make them up special. You sell sandwiches. I don't give them away. Lunchies, munchies. That's inventive. What about Gloria's friends? Enemies? Lots of both. Anyone in particular come to mind? That'll take some thought. What'd you think of her? Loved the lady, hated the sandwich. <laughs> What's that? Your prize. I think I love you. Lunch? <laughs> sure. The Parthenon, one o'clock. Oh, that's in Greece. That's a long way to go for lunch. Stage 22, they're remaking Helen of Troy. It sounds good. Um, you will give some thought to what I said, won't you? On one condition. I know. I won't order liverwurst with horseradish, okay? I ask so little. I'll even take an oath. I trust you. I love you, and I trust you. It's better that way. We may have a problem. What? What do you mean? Who's she? I don't know. She's been asking questions about Gloria. What kind of questions? The kind that make me nervous. I mean, she might be a reporter or something. Maybe, maybe not. Meanwhile, let's keep an eye, okay? small boy. All right. Okay. What scale? You owe me one. You the sword swallower? Oh, well, no, no, not really. Uh, I wanted to talk about representation. Well, make yourself comfortable. Oh, I did. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, I understand you're casting the bits and extras for the heart.